Today we have the pleasure of meeting with a very special singer, a songwriter and performing artist, Susan Jacobs, who has just completed an album after taking time out to write a number of beautiful songs, songs of love. Susan, tell us a little bit more about it. Thank you for having me here today. Yeah, uh, Songs of Love has been the result of many years of writing and it was time to share my songs with everybody. I've had these songs in my heart for a very long time and finally I made the time to put together my favourites of many that I've written. And here they are in an album which celebrates the emotion that we feel all so strongly an emotion in all its forms and yes that emotion it's love. When did you start to play your first songs? I was a very little girl maybe three or four years old when I started to create little songs in my mind. I would sing in the garden when I watered the flowers and I would sing to the birds. I even used the ice cream spoon or feather duster as a microphone so yeah, anything that I could lay my hands on that made a musical sound, I used to create little songs. My mother had inherited my grandmother's piano and because she really played the piano, she would lock it and she would keep the key in her jewellery box. So I always wanted to play her piano, but because she treasured it like gold and it was probably the only precious thing that she had ever inherited from her mother when she had passed away, she kept the key really well away and out of her children's um, reach. So I was only three when one day the old piano tuner, a Mr. Lund, came to our house to give it a tune. And uh, my mother had to first go and fetch the key from her jewellery box to come and unlock the piano. And as she, as she unlocked the piano, as soon as she'd unlocked it, I was there. I was at the piano next to the old piano tuner, uh, tonkling away, playing a little song. And uh, he looked at my mother and he asked her why she locked the piano, because it, it didn't make sense to him as he saw me playing away. And um, my mum said to him that she kept the piano locked because she didn't want her children to bang on the beautiful ivory keys. So he then looked down at me and he looked back up to her from his bifocals and he told her very sternly that she was locking away the talent of one of her children and that she should leave this piano open. And I guess it all started from there then. Where do you find your inspiration when you write? I find my inspiration in the strangest, most weird and wonderful places. Um, it arrives randomly and very suddenly. Um, I really need to be near my piano to write my music and, or I need to have a sheet of paper available with a pen or else I very quickly lose the thread of my song. Um, I've lost many, many songs due to this and the idea could arrive while I'm in a plane, in a train or in my car, when I'm on my way somewhere and by the time I get to my piano I could have lost my song and I've usually forgotten most of it and then I really need to wait until the inspiration comes to me again in another way. So my ideas are very fluid and they vary. Um, I could be feeling an emotion or an idea for quite some time and then suddenly the penny drops and the song comes alive on a day that I least expect it. Would you say that your songs are autobiographical? Your songs uh, seem so real. Are your songs about you? In many ways, yes. Um, my songs relate to an idea that perhaps sprout from an emotion that I've been carrying within me for a while and that emotion could relate to an event in society or an event in my personal life and then I blend those ideas together and with that a song is born. So I could say that my songs are about me but yes my songs are about everybody else as well. You have taken time out to write this beautiful album 
and you have called it uh, Dreams of Love. Why did you decide to give your album this name? My album is an interpretation of the many loves that exist and uh, it could be the love of a mother, a child, a friend or a lover. Um, it's an emotion that we all know so well in its precious forms, whether they be happy, sad, ecstatic or lonely. Um, love is such a powerful emotion and somehow it's linked to everything that we feel and are. It seems such a natural thing to write about love because it's the source of my every inspiration. So yeah, um, that's why I chose to write an album about love. Talking about inspiration, which music inspires you to write? Are you influenced by any particular era? I have always loved the music of icons such as Julie Andrews, Elaine Page and of course Barbara Streisand. Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers have always inspired me greatly but there is another part of me that adores the music and costumes in those old romantic movies of the 30s, 40s and 50s. So maybe it's the movie era of that time that inspires my style and inspires the romance in my songs that I write. Um, I blend my love of that old romantic era with the present time that we live in and uh, our world with all its challenges inspires me to write the slow songs that take us back to an era that we have somehow lost in the last decade or three. Would you regard your album as a tribute to the 30s 40s um, or 50s? Yes, in many special ways it is. I have composed all of the music and written all of the lyrics to the songs that I sing on the album. So although I'm not singing the songs of those times, I'm rekindling the beautiful memories of that bygone era in my music. Is there a last word that you would like to share with us about your album, Dreams of Love. Ah, yes, there is. I believe that there are many of us who wish we could bring to life the world of the movies in the 30s, 40s and 50s. I think that we wish we could relive those old romantic times, but there are many of us that wouldn't like to admit it. Um, our modern world is so frantic and lacks the slow-moving romance and sophistication of those years. Our modern world is also too virtual with all the modern technology that we have. And uh, we live such fast lives that we don't make time for the sweet, slow-moving romance of those times. I think there are many of us who would like to identify with the stars of those years, but time just doesn't permit. Oh, I think that there's an Ava Gardner, a Hedy Lomar, an Audrey Hepburn, a Rita Hayworth, a Vivian Lee or an Elizabeth Taylor in all of us. Uh, we wish we had the time to dress like them, to wear our makeup like them, to love our men like them. But there just isn't the time in the modern society that we find ourselves in. And although now they are just beautiful memories for us in our modern society, maybe with this music that I've created, it could bring them back to life and rekindle the chance for each one of us to be near them again. So even if only for a little while, my music could perhaps transport the listener, whether in the car, whether at home, with a lovely glass of red wine, maybe even the elderly who cannot get to those stage shows anymore. Just to transport them back to a time of beauty and romance. And maybe this album will inspire a lot of us to take life a bit more slow and just find the time for real romance and beautiful living again. When I've been listening to your music, it seems like you belongs to another time. What would you have to say about it if there was the next generation coming and didn't know about Ava Gardner, Greta Garbo? Oh, Eddie Lamar, what is the message that you could give to all those women, modern women, uh, busy working very hard and 
uh, were not like actually playing the femme fatale. I think that my music definitely does rekindle an era that is very long gone and there's probably a few of us that long back to that time and wish it could just live on and just live and live forever and then there's a new generation I think that there's a lot of young people that don't know about that era and might not want to know about it but if they were to meet the ladies of that era and maybe even the gentlemen they're more into R&B and grooving you know nowadays yeah I mean everybody there's a there's a music for every person and we are all welcome to enjoy that which we prefer but you're not afraid to be old-fashioned <laughs> <laughs> if I may say I, I just am who I am and I've always been this way maybe I was born into the the wrong era. Maybe I should have been born into a time where women wore the long dresses and um, and just wooed their men in a very romantic way. Um, maybe I do belong to another time and another era. But I'm sure that there would be a lot of young people today that would be tempted to understand how the woman put their makeup on in the 20s or 30s or how they wore their dresses and how they um, spoke um, to people and what they did in those times. So I think that there is an audience for my music in they the could, new generation. And they could dream of love. They could dream of love because this is what the album is really bringing home is that love does exist in its romantic way and we don't have to be so fast about everything. We can take life slowly and we can take it slowly and just enjoy. My heart's showing you how high. Susan, thank you very much for sharing this moment with us. We wish you all the best for this album, Dreams of Love. Thank you ever so much. It's been a privilege to share this wonderful moment with you and uh, with everybody else out there and um, hoping that a lot of you will enjoy Dreams of Love in the same way that I've enjoyed writing my songs. So let's enjoy it. Yeah, so let's enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>